inspiring you to build the life of your dreams by teaching you how to create a career you love. This is the Job Lab Podcast with your host, Nick Murphy. Hey there, my friend, and welcome to the Job Lab Podcast, the show that helps you close the gap between where you are and where you want to be in your career. My name is Nick Murphy, and I'm really grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with me here today on episode number six. If you're coming back to us again, thank you. And I want to welcome any new listeners. I'm really happy that you're here. Listen, if you're a frequent listener or just love what you've heard thus far, take a minute just to think about that one person in your network, in your family or at your job that's looking to grow their career just a little bit faster than it's currently happening and share the show with them. Then that way they can get some of the same ahas that I know you're getting from my brilliant guests. And if you find yourself wanting more than just one episode a week, I got you covered. Just text never settle to 44222 to enroll in the daily dose. That's my 100% free daily email filled with quick wins and limitless career inspiration. If you missed episode five, wow, what a show. I spoke with Ellie Johnson, Managing Director of TruthAbility, and she talked all about truth, lies, and deception in the workplace, and how important it is to be able to encourage more truth in our relationships at work and in our lives. If you missed it, you missed out on some great life hacks, as well as a valuable free gift from Ellie, and some tips on what to look for to know when you're being BS at work. So go check that out when you get a second. You'll be glad you did. Today's guest is Morgan Field, a corporate rock star turned entrepreneur and life coach, and just an all-around badass chick. In my conversation with Morgan, we talk about what made her such a force to be reckoned with in the corporate world. She shares the secrets to climbing the corporate ladder quickly and with ease. Then I pepper her with questions about how she knew it was time to move away from the corporate world to go out on her own and what skills we can all develop that have enabled Morgan to grow a six-figure income and become a best-selling author all in less than two years. As always, we play rapid fire. There's a ton to cover here in my chat with Morgan, so let's get right into it. Hi, my friends. Today, I am joined by Morgan Field. Morgan is a best-selling and six-time award-winning author of Epic Sexy You. She's an expert on self-love, confidence, happiness, entrepreneurship, and empowerment, helping awaken souls to a life beyond their wildest imagination and leaving mediocrity in the dust. She's a life coach, an intuitive life coach, and has built a business from the ground up that is currently in 18 countries and counting. Morgan, welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here with you. If you want to add on to that bio or, or give our listeners, we're going to talk about a lot. I've got like 20 some odd questions for you. It's, it's way above what we normally do. And I want to get into your story and kind of how you became epic, sexy Morgan Field, not just Morgan Field corporate soldier. So if you want to give a little bit of insight kind of into what you're doing today so that people understand it, and then I really want to dive deep into your background. <laughs> I basically created a life that I absolutely love and figured out how to get paid doing what I love. So some of the things that I absolutely love doing are connecting with people, having really deep, soulful conversations that allow people to transform their mind to really serve their desires. So I get to do that every day. I work with people one-on-one. I also host retreats all over the world. I love traveling. So whether I travel to different countries to host a retreat and have lots of adventures and do life coaching all at the same yummy time, or whether I am traveling for hosting events and doing motivational speaking, transformational experiences for people to just really help increase the consciousness so that people know that you can have whatever you want. And I'm really big on freedom, freedom to say yes to things I love, the freedom to say no to things that I don't love, uh, the freedom to have my time spent however I choose to spend my time. So I get to work from home or I can work from anywhere. I just recently moved to Miami and I have a pool in my backyard and I get to work out in this amazing backyard. And when I say work out, I don't mean like physically work out, although I can do that too, but I mean, I, I get to work outside. So my office, I have an indoor office and I have an outdoor office. So I'm living my dream life and could not be more excited. And I help other people create whatever their dream life is and just make it come to life. So that's, that's exactly why I wanted to have you on the show. I think I'm really, really curious to hear the details. And, you know, we've known each other since 2011 or so, but walk me through what you were doing uh, up until 2011. Where'd you go to school? What'd you major in? And kind of what were you doing up until that time? I went to Louisiana State University. People always ask me, why did I choose that school? I chose it because it was a thousand miles away from home. (laughs) And I wanted to just spread my wings and fly. And 
it was warm and far away. So I did that for about two and a half years. It was not a good fit for me based on just like my personality and what I wanted out of life. So I ended up transferring back to University of Illinois, Chicago. Since I'm originally from Chicago, I got my degree in communications and I did a temporary detour where I did an internship with Disney, which was amazing. Not the actual internship itself, but just being in Florida, which I am now. I love it here. And what's really interesting is, and I say this a lot actually, is I didn't actually want to go to school. I I love learning, but I love learning what I love learning. I love studying. I'm a huge nerd and I'm huge into immersion and mastery. So I love learning different pieces of things that really light me up. And so one of the things that I noticed was school. So it was kind of hard for me to get through school. I, oh man, it was just, just having to take classes for the sake of taking classes really was hard for me. So same thing in the corporate world, having meetings for the sake of meetings was really hard for me as well. So, so that's what I did for school. And I always intuitively knew that what I was studying, it didn't really matter. It's that I was going, I always felt like I was going to create something that was so outside of any box that was already existing that I didn't actually need school in order to do that. So, and that has been validated now at my 35 years of my life, but it took a long time for me to get there to see what that is. And then my corporate world prior to being in creating this dream life that I'm living now. So when I graduated from college, I I really enjoy people. I enjoy connecting. And so I got into recruiting. So I was doing, I was a recruiter for a little while. And then and on the side, I was doing like bartending and waitressing, which I really loved because I got to connect with people as well. Listen, especially as bartending, you just like got to connect with people coming to the bar and listening to their stories, their life stories. I've always been very intrigued by people and why we do what we do and what's going on in our lives and where we're stuck. So I think my life coaching journey started uh, way back then. And then I ended up working in the recruitment advertising space. So I did that for about eight years. That's where you and I met. And I I really enjoyed the majority of the journey until the end. And, and the reason is, is because I loved learning and I was growing and learning. And I, I had this aim to get to a specific point in the company on the ladder. And then once I got there was when I was like, oh, (laughs) there's nowhere else to go and I'm not growing and I'm not learning. And I just started awakening to there's got to be more to life than this. There was nowhere else to go in the ladder. And I also felt like there was a ceiling and I don't particularly care to be in the confines of a ceiling or a box. And so I started to explore what else I could actually create for myself instead of going to another corporate position where I felt like I was just going to repeat the process all over again. I ended up starting my own business. So for the people out there that do want to climb the ladder, and and I, this is going to be a great episode because we get to talk about how you were successful in the corporate world and then how you just finally had enough and built success outside of it. So I, I want to really highlight both you know, spectrums of your journey for the people out there that want to climb that corporate ladder and want to advance that have that goal inside of their organization. What was it that you did that you would recommend people doing? If you had to narrow it down to one, two, three things to focus on all your energy, all your effort every day in the corporate world, what made you so successful? Well, one is I always had a crystal clear target. So I knew exactly where I was going and you know, it's the whole fuzzy targets don't get hit syndrome. So I knew exactly, like, I always knew what my next step was. I knew from like a large scale perspective, I wanted to be at the top of the company. I knew that from the moment I walked in. And then I always knew, okay, what's the next step? And what's the next step? And what do I need to do to get to the next step? So you don't need to see every single, you know, it's like the Martin Luther King quote, you don't need to see every single stair and step on that staircase, but you'll always see one or two. And so you just find the courage within you to take that step. And then the next step, and then the steps will be revealed to you as you go. So you don't need to know the entire path mapped out. It's just, you have to be laser focused and know, okay, what's next? What am I shooting for? What is my bullseye so that I can actually work towards it? Another thing, and this is something that has served me incredibly well, 
not only in the corporate world, also in entrepreneurship, is mastery. So I always wanted to know as much as I possibly could. I'm like a sponge. I always wanted to learn everything that I could about my own, the organization that I was working for. I wanted to know every move they were making, every new product and service they were rolling out. I would study it. I would master it. I would understand it. I would practice it. I was always sharpening my saw. I was always really understanding as much as I possibly could about the organization I worked for. And then I took that same exact process and did it with my clients. So I, my goal was always to playfully challenge myself to understand even more about the organization that I was working with that was my client than they knew about themselves, than they knew about their own organization. And so it was always just this playful game that I created to just make life and my job more fun and to really stimulate me and just hugely, hugely into mastery. And I remember probably the first few months of working at the organization, because I stayed with the same organization for eight years. And I remember someone saying that to me at the very beginning is in a really fast paced world, which I mean, you know, that was like, you know, almost 13 years ago at this point in a really fast paced world. So the world is even more fast paced now to make sure that you're educating yourself to stay ahead, to stay in a position where you are truly an expert in what you're dealing with. And that requires a level of discipline and mastery and and curiosity. And so I remember the boss that I had at that time just saying, you know, study one thing a week learn one new product or service a week, learn one new client a week, just really dedicate yourself to understanding every single week something new. And when you do that, so the the third piece would really be, so the first is, you know, know your target. You have to know it. The second is mastery. And this third piece is really understanding as you're looking at your journey, it's really making sure that well, for myself, right? It's just constantly moving yourself forward, 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 forward to the point and also being so good they can't ignore you. So that was the other thing too, is if you know where you're going, if you're hitting that target, if you're studying the mastery, if you're always moving forward, it's making sure that the people around you are seeing what you're doing. It's actually interesting too, because it doesn't really matter eventually people will just see it if you're consistent. So if you're always moving forward, if you're consistent, so same thing in entrepreneurship, whether you're in a corporate world or in entrepreneurship, doing things over and over and over and over and over again so consistently that you stand out amongst the crowd and people are like, okay, I'll pay attention what's going on. So I was consistent in connecting with clients. I was consistent in connecting with people inside the company that... I knew I needed their attention in in order to get the promotions I wanted. I was consistent. I am consistent now in my world of putting myself out there, inviting people to work with me, showing people what it's like when you really step into your dreams. So just consistently moving forward, consistently working your way towards that target. No doubt why you were so successful. You you started as a recruiter, you went into the recruitment ad space as a as an individual contributor, as a rep, and then I know you ended your tenure there in management. What was the most rewarding experience you had in your corporate career? Hmm. I would actually say it came after. And what I mean by that is every single thing we do prepares us for every single thing we will do. And Steve Jobs says you you can't connect the dots forward, but you can backwards. And so I see this a lot with people who are in the corporate world that want to go into entrepreneurship is thinking that they're, it's almost like they're getting frustrated that they are, that, that they're in a space that they don't actually want to be in anymore. And what I would say, and this is something that was so rewarding now looking back is every single thing that I learned and that organization taught me how to run a business how not to run a business, how to do... I learned sales. I learned marketing. I Because I was in the leadership space, I learned leadership. I learned how to create teams. I learned, I mean, award-winning teams, right? Like I learned how to manage 
millions and millions of dollars of business and services and clientele. I, I learned communication. I learned customer service. I learned so many things that I didn't even consciously realize I was learning at the time that would allow me to create a very thriving business. I learned um, branding and marketing and, 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 and. And I got to learn so much from watching clients that wouldn't make changes or the organization when I would be like, man, why are they doing it this way? Why aren't they doing it this way? It was, these were all things that that irritation, those frustrations, those things that I couldn't understand actually became the keys to me going, ah, I get to implement this in my own business. And I, and I get to help others implement this in their business as they build it as well. So it's funny to me that at the time, I was just so in the move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward that I didn't even realize that I was like on a treasure hunt of collecting all of these really yummy nuggets of information and knowledge and wisdom that was going to help me be able to scale and grow my empire that I didn't even know at the time I wanted to do. So it's just trusting that whatever you're doing, eventually one day it'll make sense why you're doing it. And the timeline, oh man, looking back, it was brilliant. Just like from the moment I started all the way into the day I left, like every single thing, when I look back, it just makes sense now. It's at the time it, you know, I remember going into the, towards the end, I remember going in to the office and being kind of frustrated because I was like, this isn't what I want to be doing. And I already know what I want to be doing. And I'm doing this life coaching business thing on the side. And I just wanted to do that full time. And, you know, it's, I, I couldn't see at the time how beautiful that whole flow and process was that really allowed me to create a bridge to go from the corporate world into my business and to still have something that was providing an abundance for me that allowed me to build in flow instead of build in fear. So every single thing really worked for me, including at the very end, I was brought on board to manage a client who was one of the largest clients in the company that was looking to leave. And they wanted me to manage this client to see if I could save them um, from leaving. And what was interesting was when that client ended up leaving, it impacted my business to the point where it was like the universe was saying, okay, you actually have to go now. So like, go get it, you know? And so just every single thing was really working for me, even though I, I couldn't see it at that time. One of the things that I keep hearing in, in your story, and it's really a recurring theme so far on this show is, is curiosity. And, and when you're curious, you're engaged. And when you're engaged, you're asking questions. When you're asking questions, you're learning. And the most successful people I know are doing things that that they're inherently curious about. I think that's a really really key takeaway for for any listener out there that is is listening to this episode. And I know, I mean, for me, I think there's a lot of people that have the skills. I talk to them all the time. They have the skills or the talent to be great in sales, and they're like, "Oh, I don't want a quota," and they're they're afraid of the afraid of the quota, or afraid of the performance nature uh, and the comp fluctuation that that is inherent in sales, but man, don't you just learn so much about business by having different clients at different industries? And even if you're solving the same problem, it's one of the reasons I've stayed in recruitment advertising for so long is it's, there's never a dull moment. You know, there, there's a different perspective, a different lens to look at every problem through. And I think it's just, it's really, really fascinating. But despite your huge success, at some point, you're just kind of over it all. Tell me that story. Tell me about the moment that it just clicked and you knew, all right, this is it. I think I had a couple of them that just stacked on one another. And the first one was I was in leadership. I was managing a team of about six sales reps. And I had my director at the time come to me and she said, you know, you, you've been talking about this pull that you have towards doing this retreat in to, as a participant going on this, you know, spiritual journey, this retreat um, to get to know yourself a little bit better. And it was this thing in Sedona, Arizona. And she's like, you've been talking about it for a while and you just haven't done it. And she's like, when was the last time you took a vacation? And I, I sat back and I thought about it and it was like four or five years that I had been working without a vacation. And when I say vacation, I mean, 
going somewhere without bringing work with me. So there were plenty of times where I would go on air quotes vacation, you know, whether it was a girl's trip and we'd have, you know, we'd go to Florida and we would hit the beach, but I always had my phone on me. I was responding to emails. I brought my laptop at the end of the day, I would, you know, pull out the laptop and I would, you know, do some work and respond to emails. And she was like, you just, you, you need to go and, and take a break. And so between my director and a uh, boss that I had had previous, it kept getting mirrored back. So I did. And it was interesting because I would liken it to the movie office space where I feel like I got hypnotized <laughs> and I came back and I was just like, nothing bothered me anymore. And then all of a sudden, because I, it was just like, it just, everything was so much more clear to me. So it got to this point where similar to the office space in the movie where he was like, no. And, you know, it was like, I had, it was like, I had this gift of being able to say no all of a sudden, which I had never had prior. It was all of a sudden I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. No, you can do that for yourself. And, you know, and then I started to realize that like the more that I was not as like attached so tightly wound to this position. It was like the more I kept actually working my way up the ladder very effortlessly. It was kind of funny. So it was almost like, you know, not having to work as hard to get where I wanted to go. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. So what I now would call the flow state, which is just a lot of bliss and joy and peace and just a detachment to that hustle, you know, whereas for the first five, six years, I was so in the hustle. I mean, I worked, you know, 18 hours a day. And then, you know, I started being like, no, I'm going to fill my life with some of these other yummy things. You know, life isn't just about work. And when I started to realize that, I started to hear this question of, well, there's got to be more to life than just work. Right. And it just, it kept whispering and whispering and whispering. And that question became like the most profound screaming question when I got to the highest level in the company, which was a couple years. I think it was like a year and a half or two years after I had taken the trip to Sedona, Arizona, where I went without my computer. And I just took an entire, I think it was like seven to 10 days, just by myself to connect with myself, connect with nature, get to know myself a little bit better, find out what I actually want. And so about a year and a half, two years later, I finally get to the top of the company. And what happened was, I think that I had this belief, this preconceived notion, this subconscious story that I would feel a certain way when I got to the top. I thought it would bring me fulfillment. I thought it would bring me joy. I thought it would bring me significance and, and, and I thought it would meet my needs at a whole new layer and level. Cause I had been going after this position for like seven years and I didn't feel that way. It just felt like I was excited for a minute. I was like, woo. And then, you know, and then I just remember being like, wait, what? I've been chasing this thing for seven years. I've been putting off you know, making relationships my number one. I've been putting off making myself number one. I had sacrificed so much of my life and myself and my own soul desires for so long thinking that this was the answer. And it wasn't. And so that really, really awakened me to like, okay, there's definitely more to life than chasing this title, chasing this position, chasing this next ring on the ladder, chasing uh, this financial accumulation of what I used to think was success, you know? And I just remember thinking, man, like I really bought into some kind of lie that with the position title, with having all of my Bill, you know, I didn't have any, you know, my car was paid off. I had a condo, I had a beautiful condo. Like I, I had so many things that were just creating this abundance and stability. And yet there was still this void inside of me. So that actually really started this journey to me going, okay, scratch all that. Keep this as my side thing. Keep my full time job as kind of my my mental side thing. So I would still go in, but it was not my number one commitment anymore. And then I started seeking for finding what actually would bring me fulfillment, 
in my everyday. And that's when I started to really, 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 really honor who I actually am, which one of my number one values in life is fun. So I just started going like, oh my gosh, like I don't want, if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. And, and I'm, and I started saying, okay, what can I learn? Cause I wasn't learning anything anymore. Like once I got to the top of the company, I didn't find there was much else to learn. So I started seeking for learning opportunities outside of the company, which led me to, you know, learning life coaching. And I got certified in that learning health and nutrition and studied a holistic nutrition program and got certified there. I studied yoga, teacher training, got certified there. I just started getting certifications. I have a real estate certification or license. I just started studying things to decide what do I actually want? Cause I didn't know. And then when I was playing with the, where I felt the most alive, the most inspired, the most ignited, the most delighted was working with people one-on-one life coaching. So I, I kept following that trail of excitement and delight and bliss. And I, I still do that every single day. And it's just, it's like, oh, right. Success now to me is no longer about a title and money and, and, and it's the amount of time that I get to spend loving being me. So that's my success barometer now that I constantly am checking in with. So when I notice that I'm not loving being me, I'm like, whoa, 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 what, how did you accidentally redefine success? You're chasing something that isn't actually feeding your true definition of success. And so I have to just bring myself back, like, ah, like pull myself back. Yes. Success is how much time I love you know, how much time I get to spend loving being me. And it really allows me to keep myself anchored and rooted in something that is going to bring me the most fulfillment in life, which is loving life and loving myself and loving who I'm spending time with and loving what I'm doing every single day. So despite all your certainty, despite having that aha and, and testing a bunch of different things, I love that you that you learned a lot of things. You didn't just necessarily go, oh, I kind of like this life coaching thing. I'm going to go 100% that direction. You You played it out a little bit, but <laughs> Once you got that clarity, despite that, you had to have some amount of anxiety or fear or uncertainty around how it would go. How did you overcome those feelings and, and actually take action? I think one of the biggest misinterpretations that I see when I look around me is that people assume that those of us who are chasing our dreams and living our dreams don't experience fear. And it's such a disservice to your mind or to yourself when you look at someone, I've been guilty of this too, like looking at someone and saying like, oh, they don't experience fear the same way I do. And that's true and that's false. Uh, It's true that they have a different relationship with fear than you do because they've created a more conscious relationship with fear that actually fuels them. It's false because they still have fear. We all have fear. It's a part of the human package. It's a journey. It's a journey creating the momentum to take the leap. And like I said, I wasn't just packing a parachute and jumping off a ledge and going skydiving. I built a bridge. And what I have seen with every single entrepreneur that I've worked with is when they go from corporate into entrepreneurship, there's this mentality that you have to take a leap and you just go and you have no idea what you're doing and you just jump off the ledge and you fly. What I actually see more often than not is you're constructing a bridge and you start to walk over the bridge. No one tells us, though, that the bridge never gets completed. (laughs) So you do have to take a run and jump over the few lats on the bridge that never get built. And it every single moment of stepping into greatness does require that leap. It's not leaping from the ledge so that you could die. It's just leaping. Like, will you potentially fall in the water and have to get back up and go to the other side? Sure. It's just, it's, you're taking a leap. And so for myself, man, it was funny. I would convince myself, okay, tomorrow I'm going to go in the office and I'm going to tell my boss I'm leaving and I'm going to start my own thing. And I'm so excited. And then someone in my inner circle would say something like, oh, you can't do that. And they would say they were loving me but it was fear masked as love. And I kept getting sucked into it. It's something I still pay attention to today. It's, that's normal. It's natural. It's another thing no one ever prepares us for is that as we chase our dreams, that the people in our inner circle don't always respond the way we would expect them to. That's a really good 
Yeah, no, it's a really right? good segue. And it, it actually goes right into this next question. And it's oftentimes when we go big on anything in our life, we we offend or annoy people that we consider close friends, colleagues, family. Like, did you experience, sounds like you did experience some of that pushback. And what was the hardest part about that? The hardest part was that I had to believe in myself when I felt like no one else could see what I could see. And I always bring myself back to this. When I find myself feeling like everyone around me sees something different than I do, everyone around, everyone around me feels a different way than I do. I ask myself this question, is it possible that I actually know something they are all missing? I know they think I'm the one that's missing something, but is it possible that I actually see greatness that they can't see until they see it? (laughs) And the answer is always yes, that is possible. And we get to choose which possibility we believe and go after. So I choose to believe that it is possible that I see something that no one else can see and that it is up to me to honor myself above all else. And it is up to me to actually be the beacon of light and inspiration for others to trust themselves and their intuition and their visions and their desires, even when no one else can see it. It is painful. It was painful to, I was kind of surprised. I hear this all the time from entrepreneurs, like just how many times we are so excited and we share something with people and they just don't get it and they push, they poke holes in it. Another thing I see a lot actually, and this is something that is an ongoing journey and and work and evolution for me is the more success I create, the, the more that I can sometimes trigger people. And so what I have done now is reframed it. When I feel like someone is triggered by me, I remind myself that triggers are gifts, that triggers are allowing people to see that there's something about what I'm doing that is challenging a limiting belief that they have about themselves. And I am actually challenging the reality that their mind, their paradigm is in. And so in the past, I used to play, like I used to trigger someone because I was so bright and I would go, okay, I'll dip my light a little bit for this person. And I I didn't consciously realize I was doing it. And so now when I catch myself doing that, I'm like, no, 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 hold on a second. This is an opportunity for me to show them that they, you know, I call it the, if she can do it, so can I effect. So I, I want them to understand that it is possible for them to step more and more and more into their greatness. And oftentimes when people are blinded, they have blinders on. That's why they can't see it. That's why it is possible that I see something they don't see because I constantly take my blinders off. I'm constantly like, what is getting in my way? How do I get out of my own way? And then I can see things that no one else can see. It's really, really difficult to get people's conditioned beliefs out of their head and to challenge that because it's it's not safe for any of us to truly ponder, you know, is this, <laughs> this fundamental belief I have about what's possible or what's real or what's true? If I question that, what does that, what does that do? Like, I'm not safe anymore. What does, what does that mean? And so it's a, it's a huge challenge. So for those of you that have been listening this far, I, I think you've gotten some really good tips on how to advance up that corporate ladder. I think Morgan really crushed the things that are really important to do. We're also going to talk at length about how to actually go from where you were to where you are today, because it's one thing to do it. It's another thing to to talk about how, and then we're going to play rapid fire. Stay right there. The job lab is brought to you by mid America careers, the Midwest career network. Quickly search millions of jobs with a single click, create alerts. So you're the first to know when a great new job is posted, research, exciting new career opportunities and more. No matter where you are in your professional journey, mid America careers can help. Visit midamericacareers.com to claim your free account today. All right. Welcome back. Continuing my chat with Morgan Field. Morgan, you've become a best-selling author. You've built a thriving coaching business. You do retreats all over the world. Walk me through how the heck you do that. Because there's a lot of listeners out there that, that have a side hustle or, or have an aspiration that they haven't quite started. And just it's it, there is a tactical side. There is a plan 
and there is a method to go about creating this. Share some of your secrets. I personally work backwards from most people. And I find that works really well for me. So it may not be for everyone, but this is what works for me. What I mean by that is instead of trying to find a template in the world that already exists, that I want to emulate, that I want to step into, because I don't like confines, I don't like templates, I don't like ceilings, I don't like boxes, I like to create. So I started my business with asking myself if I had the dream day, the dream week, the dream month, the dream year, what would be included? And I talk about this in my book as well, is I just kept saying, and what else, and what else, and what else, and what else, and what else would I want to experience in life? What is a lifestyle I want to live? What, so when I'm looking at my day, okay, cool. So like how many hours a day would I even want to work? What would I want to be doing with my time when I am working? What would really excite me to get out of bed? What would I, who would be in my life? What would that look like? And so what happened was I realized I looked at the day to day. I was like, okay, I would like to coach with a couple of people every single day because I love coaching. I love connecting with people. I love these like really deep conversations that allow people to go to layers that they've never gone to before and to help them change their, the way that their mind operates so that they can genuinely get out of their own way and create a life they love. So I, I love that. That satiates my soul. I also, I'm a sun goddess. So, you know, uh, now as an example, I am, I've constructed a life where I have time. I can take clients after, you know, before and after I lay out in the sun, you know, and just giving myself permission to continuously add into my day, what I really love experiencing. And that changes as you go on your journey. So just giving yourself permission to constantly check in with yourself. I also, I love traveling. I love new cultures. I love adventure. I'm a very adventurous person. I enjoy watching and guiding someone through an experience of something for the first time. So the reason I'm sharing all of these little tidbits of what I love is I constructed my business around those things. Instead of going, what are other life coaches doing? What does this template look like? What? And that's what I see a lot of entrepreneurs do when they come work with me. They already have this template in mind or they're constantly looking at what someone else in the industry is doing and they're constantly looking at what is already existing and how to compete with something that's already out there. Whereas I'm like, mm, no, I want to just create from desire. I want to create from what really lights me up. So I remember when I graduated my coaching program, I had this vision of going to Costa Rica and bringing a group with me. And I had these visions of us doing different things like surfing and doing like adventure courses in the jungle. I had these visions of doing those things and helping tie these experiences into what is going on in their everyday life. And I could actually, I noticed I could actually see when and how someone was blocked when they were either playing and having fun or when they were doing an adventure and experiencing fear. I got to see what their pattern was that stopped them from stepping into their own dream life and their own greatness. So it was amazing. I had this vision and I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. And I started telling people in the coaching program about it. And they were like, well, but you know, shouldn't you wait a couple of years or do you, you know? And it was just so funny. I was like, nope, I'm doing this. So I just started trying things to see what I actually enjoyed doing. And I did that. The first retreat took a handful of ladies. We went to Costa Rica. We did zip lining in the jungles. We did jungle swings. We did all these amazing epic adventures. And we had these amazing transformative breakthrough experiences as a result. So I was honoring my desire for travel in doing this. I was honoring my desire for adventure. I was honoring my desire for sisterhood. I was honoring my desire for soul connection. And then I started looking at, okay, how many one-on-one clients do I want to take on? And I, there were days where I'd go, whoa, I took too many on today. 
And then I was constantly checking in with myself at the end of every day. What did I love about today? What didn't I? So you don't, again, you don't have to know the entire map before you start stepping into action of creating. And if you do have a map, like you're going to step into creation and that map's going to go out the window. It's going to change. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. No, I love that you shared that. I think, you know, different strokes for different folks, as they say, right? So it's, what you did so well was you were crystal clear on what you wanted to be doing, how you wanted to spend your days. And I think for anybody who's out there in their job, that's that's really what it is. It's it's realizing so many times that I don't want to be doing this every day of my life or at all anymore. And so starting with the end in mind, not the details, because you're hundred percent right, that map's gonna be thrown out the window and rewritten and transcribed and you know, thrown away again and redone again. It, it it's always gonna be an evolving process. But understanding exactly what you want to be doing, what fulfills you, what you're driven by, is a really great place to start. So I'm I'm thrilled that you shared that because I think it's it's so different and so unique uh, from what we see out there in the market. So Morgan, are you ready to play rapid fire? Yes. Let's do it. Here we go. What do you think about when you're alone in your car? Oh, I like to sing. <laughs> I'm really bad at singing, so I like to I like to sing and then I also love listening to audiobooks. What's your advice for your previous boss? My previous boss. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've had a boss. Um, who was my Oh my gosh, that's so fun. You know what? I'm I'm going to celebrate the fact that I can't even remember who my last boss was because it's been that long since I've had a boss. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, oh I already feel like I am who I want to be. And just continuing to expand and grow and increase the consciousness and remember to have fun and reward myself for all the amazing things I'm doing. What inspires you? everything inspires me and myself. I inspire myself, which I think is great. You can't, how how are you going to inspire others if you can't inspire yourself? And I have like the most amazing group of people around me that inspire me. You are one of them. And I think that's so important to continuously be around people that really make you think bigger and challenge yourself to step into more and more greatness. I've got a lot of those folks. I'm so grateful for that. What is your biggest fear? Ooh, I think the thing I've been cracking the code on recently is this fear of I've been really stepping into more and more playing in the courage portal of love. And the biggest fears I'm bumping into are not being enough and not being lovable. Who do you admire the most? The first thing that actually comes to mind, which is really interesting, I I admire children. I love the spirit and soul of a young little nugget, which is what I call kids. I, I absolutely love and adore being around the, the purity of a soul that is so connected to who they are and what they want. Which celebrity annoys you the most? Annoys me the most. I don't, I don't watch TV. I love it. Last one. You get to share a drink or a meal with anyone in history, dead or alive. Who is it and why? Two people come to mind. One is my grandmother who has passed away. Although I feel like I would absolutely love to have a drink with her and and get to know her as an adult. And I, ooh, oh my gosh, I have like so many more. Okay, I would, Elon Musk, uh, Albert Einstein, Brené Brown. There are a lot of people. So it's like, it's more like a dinner party or a cocktail hour than it is just like a one-on-one conversation. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. What is your number one parting piece of advice for people that they know they're sick of the corporate world and they want to go out on their own? And then lastly, how can we follow more of your content? (sighs) Advice is the questions that you're seeking to find externally. There are all these questions that we typically have that we're seeking to find the knowledge externally. I would challenge you to sit still and ask yourself those questions and just hear the answers and have the courage to take action on whatever the intuitive guidance that comes up for you. So whatever, there's always that little window of time where when you ask yourself a question, you get like a really raw, honest, soulful answer before you get, yeah, but, and how do you do that? And all of those mind ninja, I call it the ninja mind that like wants to keep you small. It wants to assassinate your greatness. That version of you, it won't come up for about 
two to five seconds. So you've got a small window of time. So start asking your going internal and, and giving yourself permission to listen to what your own wisdom is and courage to follow that up with action. And the sooner you can take action from that, wow, the magic zone is right there. And how can you follow me? So on my website, I have a, you know, you can join the tribe, which just like a corporate meeting, which I couldn't stand where it was like being in a meeting for the sake of meeting, I do not send out things for the sake of sending out things. So if you join the tribe, you'll just get yummy, juicy stuff. That's at www.epicsexyyou.com. So that's E-P-I-C-S-E-X-Y-Y-O-U.com. Also on the website and or on Amazon, if you um, are interested in getting the book, which I totally recommend, that is on there as well. Or you could go to Amazon at Epic Sexy You and get it there. It's a bestseller. So check that out. And then on social media, I'm my two favorite platforms to play on are Facebook and Instagram, which you can find either under Morgan Field, M-O-R-G-A-N, F. I E L D like a baseball field or Epic sex you love it. We're going to put all those links in the show notes and Morgan, always a pleasure, absolute inspiration for anyone who's looking to climb the ladder and, and those who are looking to jump the hell off the ladder at the same time. So always a blast. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. It was awesome. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Morgan Field. Morgan is a force of nature and just a shining example of what's possible when we're laser focused, curious and authentic in our pursuits. Next week on episode seven, I'll chat with the VP of sales at a major cybersecurity company. In our conversation, we'll talk about the importance of building a personal brand in our careers and why every working professional needs to focus on creating an authentic message, growing our networks, and being consistent and purposeful in the way that we manage our reputation and our brand throughout our careers. So if you're currently employed, looking to grow, and want to take a few shortcuts on your way to building a personal brand that gets you noticed and promoted, you will not want to miss this show. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the show to make sure you never miss an episode. And if you love what you're hearing, share the show with your network. And give the Job Lab a five-star rating and leave a review for us out there on iTunes. And if you're still thirsty for just a little bit more, just text Never Settle to 44222 to get your free daily dose of career inspiration. Whatever you do, whatever you aspire to do, remember, never settle. Thanks for being here, and I'll be back with you next week. You've been listening to The Job Lab with your host, Nick Murphy. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe on iTunes or Google Play today.